Hello and thank you for checking out this video. My name is Iman and in case you somewhat recognize <laughs> me, yes, I up until quite recently used to be a political activist in Canada. I do have a couple of YouTube channels but that is besides the point. don't really want to mention them here but I just wanted to get that out of the way in case you recognized me. Why am I here? And why is this video titled what it's titled? And yes, welcome, black sheep. You are welcome here. And what's the goal of this? I'm going to start by giving you uh, a little bit of history about who I am. I uh, immigrated to Canada from Saudi Arabia in 2003. I immigrated, I call it an escape rather than an immigration because that's what it kind of felt like. But uh, I escaped during the SARS pandemic and I came to Canada where I established my life uh, because I wanted freedom. I lived under radical Islam and uh, I have a long standing history with um, being forced to cover my face against my will. And that was actually the main reason, that's actually the main reason, believe it or not, that I left Saudi Arabia and came to Canada. I also am an MD, though not working, and I have not been working as a medical doctor since 2007 when I quit. And yes, I was working as a medical doctor in Canada. I also am a massage therapist, though no longer registered and no longer working, uh, thanks to the policies implemented by our, by our lovely government regarding COVID. Why, why, I guess, why am I doing this video? I am doing this video because up until COVID hit, I was living my life, doing my own little thing, you know, plugging away just like everyone else uh, is, was. Uh, and then suddenly something happened and it had to do with the mandated face masks. And this is not political, by the way, not here to anger anyone regarding anything. I am here to simply explain what happened. Because of the face mask mandates and because of my long-standing history and how I view them um, as a traumatic thing that is enforced upon us against our will to, to somewhat break our spirit. I, I truly believe that. Uh, break uh, the, the, the spirit aspect of, of the human being uh, under very strange disguise usually righteous. Usually face coverings are associated with a righteousness which is why people like them. The, the people that enforce them really, really believe in them. They like them. And uh, in my part of the world, when I was forced to cover my face, when I took the, the face veil off, I would be called a whore. Here, they just call you a grandma killer and an anti-masker. <laughs> but something happened when the mandates hit. Uh, and that something was uh, very strange uh, and it shifted it shifted me significantly, but not before it traumatized me significantly. Um, I'm sharing this because I wonder if this happened to you. But after much research, I realized that what happened to me is, tr is rare. I guess it's rare. And it's termed a spontaneous Kundalini awakening, which a lot of people, I believe, go to something called Kundalini Yoga to experience. Or to, to go through. Um, as we advance in life, we spiritually grow, we personally grow, we gain wisdom, we gain knowledge. It just happens on very, it happens slowly. Uh, and you gain more wisdom and even eventually you, you get old and you know if you don't have Alzheimer's dementia and end up in a nursing home you become wise, an elder, you know, a leader, a wise leader. And then some of us get hit smack on the head <laughs> by the universe to wake up. 
and I believe that's uh, what happened to a, a small, I still continue to say a small because I don't find many people other than Eckhart Tolle I know of who, who, who was shaken up spiritually this way and, and broken out of his, uh, his egoic shell, I guess. Uh, so the first three days or two to three days were quite traumatic. There was a lot of energy and buzzing going on through my back. And then that eventually settled down, though the buzzing continued for three, three to four months, on and off. Uh, but then I began to experience strange things uh, in, in, in my own personal relationships with people. And I say this because I wonder if you're experiencing the same. But I began to see people's patterns. And as I began to see people's patterns, I also began to notice my own patterns. What are patterns? Patterns are emotions, energy that comes out in the form of thoughts, in the form of verbalization, words, or in the form of actions that are rooted in trauma. This is traumatic energy that plays out as a loop in me, possibly you, some people around me, possibly some people around you. But I began to see these loops, these patterns, and these are the patterns that I used to blame other people. He did this to me, he did this to me. But these are my patterns. These are patterns from a trauma that I lived that I have decided to perpetuate and every time I perpetuated this pattern I kept myself stuck in my life repeating the same same shit different day so for the next six months this really 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 scared me I had no clue what I was going through but the the person that this mainly happened with was somewhat awake themselves and they kept telling me, you're repeating a pattern. So I began to reflect and look into my own self. And as I began to reflect, I began to experience energetic release in the form of crying. <laughs> uh, in the beginning, I used to lose myself in the emotion. But as I, as I furthered my knowledge, into what was happening and the knowledge came from within as well it, the knowledge I sought it but it also arose from within um, I began to place a distance between myself and the traumatic energy and the memories that were arising and I would literally just engage in breathing exercises very slowly until the traumatic energy and the associated emotions and feelings would resolve it would take about five to ten minutes a session but just slow breathing exercises and it also happened to help that I began meditating at the same time. This was all around the time the face mask mandates began and the COVID lockdowns were initiated. As I began to live this way and to recognize uh, what was happening and to understand the patterns and continue on with my own meditation to calm myself down because I didn't know what was happening. Um, and I needed somewhat, and everything was locked down. And I had to figure out how to resolve this myself. So I began meditating in various ways, using the Oculus 3D, using my own. I also bought some Oracle decks because I, they helped me in my meditation. That's just me. And every time I meditated, I would release uh, traumatic energy. The experience itself was frightening, but afterwards the resolve and the person that you become and the space, the space that is filled with goodness uh, because the negative and traumatic energy has been removed is amazing. It really uh, is life altering because you begin to be able to create space for success, for belief in yourself for love, loving yourself, loving others the right way. After you remove the energy of lack, fear, anger, 
hate and judgment. Shame. Betrayal. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I digress. Uh, that's. It was just interesting to notice that as I got rid of negative energy, uh, I created space for other things to come in. The other thing I began engaging in uh, was also self-love and, and self-care and pampering myself because again, everything was shut down. <laughs> so I did a lot of that and that also shifted uh, how I view myself and how I view myself in the world. And it shifted how I allow people to speak to me. And I wonder if this is also happening to you. Are you no longer able to stand your work environment? Are you no longer able to live in the city that you're in? Have you reached the point where you feel I can't do this <laughs> anymore? Is that you? So those also helped me in my uh, spiritual growth in the two years of COVID. In the end, I have found that I've lost all the previous friendships that I've had, they're gone. Uh, no new friendships have occurred yet because I can't just, I'm not able yet to figure out how to place myself in this world and how to function in this world. Because the minute I go out, two things happen. I begin to see people's patterns immediately, immediately, to the point that I, I see their suffering in their patterns. So if you begin to speak to me, and it doesn't matter where we're speaking, we could be speaking on the street, could be speaking through Zoom, I can immediately tell you where you're suffer where you're where you're stuck. Uh, is that a good thing? Is it a, a probably a good thing because I can help so many people? But at the same time, it's a bad thing because a lot of people don't want to know this. They didn't ask for it. So I'm still sort of trying to figure out my place. Uh, so I thought of doing this video, and I do apologize if it seems like I'm talking about myself too much. I really don't want to appear this way, but I feel like I can help. And uh, if I can help, how will you know that I can help you unless I tell you? <laughs> about myself. So here I am telling you about myself. I see people's patterns. I have become strongly, I've, I've honed my intuition. All of this has come to me through meditation and work, working on myself and shadow work, a lot of shadow work. But uh, my intuition has reached a level that is frightening. <laughs> it's frightening because I can, it's hard because I, I also understand that not to judge, right? You should not judge. People are people. We are humans. We, we, we are stuck in our patterns. Just because I exited the, the stuckness of my own patterns doesn't mean I get to judge other people who are stuck in their own patterns. If anything, I feel sympathy and I wish to help. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's frightening because I, I can now see the lying the little lies that people say to me, people that I love and they love me. And I'm like, I know you're lying, but I don't want to say it to you because it's going to hurt you. So I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> Is this happening to you? Are you experiencing things where you feel that you can see through people that you can read subtle energies? It's almost like you're almost psychic. So, uh, if any of the stuff I talked about resonates with you, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, I've talked about who I am. Uh, I've talked about somewhat why I, I'm doing this video and uh, I don't want it to be too, too long. So I'm getting ready to finish off here and close, even though there's a lot more I want to say. But let's see how this video goes. I'll wait and see the comments. But um, judgment is not something that I will, I don't want to say I will tolerate. <laughs> That's very harsh. 
uh, but uh, I also see judgment now and I have for the most part I try to place space between judging someone and myself um, uh, I don't judge people anymore because I forgot to tell you the other thing that happens when I go out the first thing was that I see people's patterns the second thing is that people who are about to spiritually break out of their their egoic shell uh, they flock to me I attract people who are very close to a spiritual in enlightenment an awakening uh, something a spiritual hit they flock to me uh, so I don't know what energy it is I'm putting out there that makes people flock to me who are on that that close to their own path so that's something that I should also mention and because of that I've stopped judging people I would leave you uh, with that in closing uh, let's see how this first video does I uh, I just wanted to connect I don't promise uh, the moon and the stars I would like to form a community regardless how small or how big it is and hopefully grow together because I have sensed the new earth energy I've sensed it and I've played with it shortly shortly <laughs> uh, but it, it's, it's beautiful and if we can seed that energy together, uh, then so be it.